Good morning children, you are locked up in the rooms just because of microbes, is not it? But today we are going to identify some of them, which are only visible under the high power of electron microscopes. It is not at all visible in the under the compound microscopes in your labs, right. We start off with bacteria. Bacteria are microscopic, unicellular and prokaryotic in organization. That means, they are having a nucleoid structure. They do not have a nuclear membrane and cellular organelles are lacking. Only ribosomes are present and one chromosome is there. They are of different shapes. They can be rod shaped, we call them as bacillus. They can be circular, they are cocci. They could be spiral, we call them as spirillum. They could be comma shaped or vibrio. These bacteria, they are harmful to us also as well as useful to us also. Next, we move on to oscillatoria. Oscillatoria, it belongs to the kingdom monera. Fine, but we call them as blue green algae. Blue green algae, they are filamentous in nature, but they are not branched at all. And they have got two significant features. What are they? Presence of separation disc is visible and hormogonia structure is seen within the filament. Third one is pyrogyra. This is a typical chlorophycin algae found in the ponds. We call it pond silk. This is also filamentous like oscillatoria, but it does not have sea green color. It is pure green in nature. And most important thing, the name pyrogyra, it comes from the spiral chloroplast that it has. It is visible under low power, but under high power, if we place one of the cells, it will be seen that the nucleus is suspended by some cytoplasmic strands from round the corner. Fourth one is bread mold. Bread mold, it appears on your leftover bread with if you sprinkle little bit of moisture during your monsoon season you will see tufts of whitish things growing like cotton. And then gradually, if you have a magnifying glass at home, you will see some things shooting up from the mycelial structures. And gradually, the, the head looks like the pin of an alpin and it grows from grayish to blackish in color. These are the sporangium and these are the reproductive structures being carried forward by this stalk known as sporangiophore. As the spore matures, they become blackish in color. Ultimately, the sporangium bursts open, dispersing the spores. And its scientific name is rhizopus. Last one is a very useful microbe. We call it as yeast. It is a baker's pride yeast, isn't it? And a brewer's choice. It gives us two essential things. What are they? Carbon dioxide as well as ethanol by fermentation process because it respires anaerobically. Coming to its structure, it is unicellular. We find presence of nuclear vacuole and reproduction is exclusively by budding. When there is too much availability of carbohydrate, we find this kind of stage of yeast and this stage is known as torula, T O R U L A. When these buds drop off, they give rise to another individual yeast and that brings us to the end of it. Thank you children. Students, let us see the macroscopic plant specimens. We need to identify them. You can see them in front of me, is not it? So many of them are there, which are visible with a naked eye, but we do not know their identity. Already we know about the plant kingdom. So, let us try to find out whether we are able to identify them. Off we start. This one does not have any bit of chlorophyll inside it. It is obviously a member of fungus and we have seen them growing during the rainy season, is not it? So, it is known as mushroom and we call it as agaricus, is not it? And it is a saprophyte. What does it have? 
it has got a umbrella shaped structure and there is a stalk here, we call it as a stipe annulus and if we can zoom in a bit on the underneath of this you will find certain filamentous structures are there below this hood and if you come by it that is this is none other than agaricus. Next we move on to bryophyta, bryophyta. Now, bryophyta has got two subgroups we know is not it one is liverwort another one is moss. As an example of uh, liverwort right now we have rixia in front of us. This rixia it grows on the soil it grows prostrately and they are having leaves which are heart shaped dichotomously branched and the sex organs are embedded inside the thallus. They grow on the soil and if you go to the cooler areas they are a bit leathery growing on the hill slopes and nothing protrudes out because the reproductive structures are embedded in this thallus itself. And then and there is funaria, funaria hygrometrica. What is it? A member of bryophyta, but it is a moss. Now, how are they little different from my rixia? You will see there are leafy structures, there are leafy structures which are spirally arranged around a central axis and the base shows you the green portion is the gametophyte, whereas some pin like structures are visible to you which is having a sharp edge at the top. This structure which is jutting out from the base that is known as a sporophyte. Here the sporophyte is not independent, it is dependent on the gametophyte. Now this structure which you see which is embedded inside the gametophyte not visible to you that is foot, the slender thing is sitta and at the top that pin like structure is the capsule. The capsule bears the spores when it dries up it dehisces and the spores are let off into the air. Then we move on to the next specimen in front of you it is a fern, it is a fern might be growing in your damp areas of your garden and during September and October if you have a look at the back side you will find some dotted structures as if somebody has laid some eggs some insects. Actually these are sori s o r i these are the reproductive structures which enclose the spores inside. Pteridophytes as you know they are evolutionary on a higher pedestal than the bryophytes. Here we find in this specimen it is not however visible they have got a, a true root, they have got true leaf and true stem like structure. And of course, uh, pteridophytes are having a vascular tissue because they are terrestrial plants. Moving on to the next, we have gymnosperms. Let me show you two cones. I hope you will recognize them. These are these are fruiting bodies, these are fruiting bodies of pinus. If you happen to go to Darjeeling or Sikkim, you will encounter them in a pine forest falling down. There are two types of cones, these cones are also known as trobili. This is male cone and this is female cone. In comparison to the male cones, the female cones are short and stubby and the male cones they are long and they are slender. Now these are leafy structures, leafy structures they are hard and woody we call them as sporophyll, megasporophyll. They are arranged around a central axis and where are the ovules present you know towards the base. Okay. And what about the plant? When you draw a pine plant, what do we draw? It has got needle shaped leaves, needle shaped leaves where you find both the male cone as well as female cone they are attached to the same axis because pinus is monoecious. It consists of both male and female cone on the same plant. Apart from gymnosperms, we move on to 
the world of angiosperms. Angiosperms comprise of monocots as well as the dicots and they are most common plants that we come across. Some members of monocots are known to you, is not it? Grasses, bamboos and for dicots it includes all your flowering plants. Let us look at these two specimens are that of monocots and these two belong to dicots. How do they differ? If you look at their leaves, if you look at their leaves closely, you will see that there is parallel venation. If you look at the leaves of dicot, it is having reticulate venation, right. Their roots come up in a bunch, the roots are of equal length they are known as fibrous root and here you will find there is a leading root and there are other secondary and tertiary roots smaller than the leading root. It is a tap root system which exists there. Flowers inside the bottle are not so much clear I know, but you might have seen any other uh, hibiscus flower. When you open them up they have got specific, they have got specific worlds inside them, calyx, corolla, andrisium and gynesium and if you count the number of petals, they are either pentamerous, pentamerous meaning multiple of 5 and in the flowers of monocot, they are very tiny and they are of course, trimerous, they are multiple of 3. In the gynesium as well, uh, they are either tricarpillary or monocarpillary. This is a bit different because it is a combination of algae and fungi. They live together, they live together forming a symbiotic relationship, lichen or lichen as we call it. So, they are growing on tree trunks, they are growing on terrestrial areas and as soon as there is any indicator that the pollution level has come up in those uh, cities, we find them vanishing just like magic. So, here we go there are three types of structures been shown here. They appear as a crust and we call it as crustose or they appear like the leaves leafy structure we call it as folios and the last one appears like a fruiting body it is known as fruticos. These are the three different structures of lichens that you can see. That is all children thank you.